morning, everybody. Good morning. There we go. Uh, so welcome to the wrap up for Higher KC Youth. I hope everybody's had a great summer here in Kansas City. Uh, I'm going to serve as your MC for the day, but there's going to be a lot of fun and other really important people up here talking as well. But my name is Eric Bullschlager. I run an organization in town called Live KC. Uh, we're really trying to help make it easy for young professionals like yourselves have fun, plug in the city, um, engage civically, and do all kinds of other great stuff to keep you excited and engaged in, in here in Kansas City. I wanted to, I'm going to be very brief in my uh, comments this morning, but I wanted to leave you with just a couple thoughts that I want you to, as you head back to school, uh, just a couple things for you to think about, and some things that, frankly, that I've learned uh, in my career. And the first one I wanted to, to just mention to you is that uh, you need to be the best that you can be. Always be the best that you can be. Because you never know who's looking at you, who's looking at you for opportunities. So number one, be the best that you can be. Number two, what I wanted you to think about is that your public life should mirror your private life. So I would just caution all of you in terms of with all of the social media, which is really you know, an amazing tool. And I work for a technology company, so obviously I think it's really important uh, that we have you know, this technology and that you're able to be connected all the time. That's what Sprint is all about, is connecting people. But I would just caution you in terms of as you put things out on the social, out of this social network and put it out there, remember that folks go back and look at that. And it can be, I just saw something on the news this morning about, I think it was Miss Teen, Teen USA or Miss Teen America, who was crowned, I guess, this weekend. They went back a couple years ago and saw some very negative things that she had posted. I'm sure she thought those things were gone. They never come back up, but they do. They can haunt you. So always be aware of that. And employers, when I'm looking to hire somebody, I look out there. I look to see what kind of things that you've posted out there. I want to know what kind of employee uh, is going to be working at our company. So I would caution you to make sure that what you think stays dark does not necessarily stay dark. I don't care how long ago it was. So make sure that your public and private life are something that you would be proud about. The third thing that I would like for you to think about is to always be prepared. You never know when you're going to have an opportunity to be in front of somebody who can make an, um, a difference in your life. So always think about being prepared and being ready. When somebody asks you to do something, put your best foot forward. Remember the first one was, be the best that you can be, always. And then last but not least, I read this a long time ago and it has always stuck with me. And one of these times I'm really gonna do it when somebody asks me to speak. I read that, uh, I think it was Winston Churchill was asked to give a commencement address at a university. And you know, I'm always thinking when somebody asks me to speak, I'm thinking, I got pages and pages of stuff and it's gotta be profiled and everybody's gotta be really impressed with it when I walk away. He simply stepped to the uh, podium and he just said, never give up. And he sat back down. I mean, that was his speech. But when I thought about it, think how profound that really is, is if you never, ever give up. And for me, short story, I started working for Sprint 30 years ago, older than most of you, all of you probably in this room. But, uh, and when I first, got the, when I first uh, applied for the job, which is very different then than it is today, actually, Mayor, it was in the paper. Remember when we used to have all those jobs would be listed in the paper? And I found this job. I moved to Nashville. Kansas City is home for me. I went to Southeast, graduated from Southeast High School, lived on 38th and Wabash. Uh, but I uh, had moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and I saw this job in the, in the paper, and I knew I could do it, you know, so I applied for the job, and I didn't get it. And I was kind of blown away that they didn't hire me. I was like, wow, I didn't get the job. But about a month ago, later, I saw the exact same job in the paper again. So we didn't have Texas, I know that's hard for you to believe, or email or any of that. So I, what I did the next best thing, I wrote them a letter, Sprint. I wrote them a letter and I overnighted it to them. It's kind of like in the days of sending pigeon stuff, right? But I overnighted it to them. And I told them, if you had hired me, you wouldn't be looking for somebody today. And they called me that day and offered me the job and that was 30 years ago. So never, ever give up. So those are the four points I want to leave you with. And now. Good morning, folks. Good morning. Good morning, folks. Good morning. Good morning, folks. Good morning. You know, I have teenagers too, and 
in the morning, I always recognized that it was almost like having to pour a bucket of water on them to get a response. So I get it. I get it. Uh, thanks for being here. I hope you had a great summer. Um, I hope that you learned something. I hope that you had an opportunity to interact. I hope that you saw something that you hadn't seen and that you picked up a few hints. A couple of things that I want to get off my chest right at the beginning. I was uh, hanging around the Democratic Convention and this little issue about emails broke out. Now, no way you heard about it. Uh, let me say to you, uh, let me just take a poll. How many of you would rather text somebody than call them? So, in the process of learning how to text, you've gotten pretty good at it, right? Because you've been practicing, fingers move a lot quicker. So, guess what's lacking? Talking to people. The more time you spend texting, the less time you spend talking. And when you don't talk to people, you don't establish the relationships you're going to need. Why are those relationships important? Because those are the relationships you're going to call on when you're my age or a lot younger to get things done. And you don't establish relationships by text. You establish relationships by being face to face, by putting your hand out there, having a firm handshake, looking somebody in the eye, and establishing trust. You can't do that with a text. I text too. I dig it. It's fun. It's quick. It's easy. But I talk to people every single day. And I'd rather talk to them than text them. Because when I talk to them, they can understand the nuance in my voice. They can look at my face and tell whether or not I'm being sarcastic and smiling or whether I'm being dead serious. When you put those same words in the text, none of that's there. So, Democratic National Committee has had a big problem with texts. A lot of the people involved in those texts are people your age and a little bit older. We've gotten to this point now where we send everything by text or email, and we forget to talk to people. And we put whatever we think is in those emails and texts. And somebody comes along and finds them and then there's problems. Remember that when you're in a governmental or public or an employment situation, what you put in a text or an email is discoverable by somebody else. And you may think it sounded good at the time, you may blow off some steam at the time, you may say something you thought was funny, wasn't received that way, it will come back and bite you. So, one thing that I hope you've learned here one thing that I hope you practice here, one thing that I hope that you'll go back and practice is contact, human contact, face to face, skin to skin, eyeball to eyeball. Very important stuff for you guys to take away. The whole idea of this program is not just to give a bunch of kids a job so they can come in and earn a little money, walk out the door and that's the end of it. It's to bring you into an environment that you may not have been before so that you will gather the skills and the learning that you need to move forward. This isn't just about today, this is about tomorrow. We want to see you succeed. We want to see you grow up and meet Debbie Ballard. Debbie Ballard's a tremendous woman, a tremendous woman. And all of you young black women in this audience today, you ought to be talking to Debbie Ballard because she's one of those women who's climbed that ladder for you, who's gotten up there, and there's a lesson to be learned. If you think it's all about your looks and your grades and where you go to school, it ain't about that. It's about a lot about who you know. And you don't get to know anybody through a text or an email. You should talk to that lady. All ladies should talk to that lady. All ladies should talk to the women on my staff. They've been around and we've had these conversations about text and email. Don't avoid human contact. It is the essence of who we are. It is what keeps us together. It is what limits conflict. It is what makes us better people. So, enough of that. I want to thank you all for being here. I want to especially thank the interns who were in my office. Lucy prepared some remarks for me here. Uh, you were involved in that, right, Lucy? You were? All right, I stopped reading when I got to this line. Um, when you are as ancient as I am, <laughs> You will look back at this time with fond memories. I ain't dead. <laughs> this ain't biblical times. I'm about 118 years old and spreading children from my loins and all that kind of stuff. Thank you, Lucy. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Lucy's all right. But uh, let me get a couple of things out. 
uh, Sprint, J. E. Doug, Kaufman, Center, KPRS, American Century, all of those companies had a hand in bringing this program together and doing what's good for you and making this whole thing work. City of Kansas City, Missouri, also. I live in a world where I rely on the goodwill of others. Companies that are willing to devote money to do things that I ask them to do. A city that's willing to do something that's a little bit different in order to make sure that we're reaching every segment of the community. Rosalind, hi. How are you, doing? you want to talk to a lady who's been through some stuff and who has set a mark? She's right over there. Rosalind Temple lost her son to gun violence in this city. She didn't roll up into a ball in the corner and turn it into a rolling pulley. She went out and started working, and she works with Mothers in Charge, and Mothers in Charge is a group of mothers who've lost kids to gun violence who go out and try and help those who are in the same boat. She goes to every homicide. She's the one that's picking up the mother that's crying on the ground, picking her up and trying to make sure that she understands that there's somebody there for her. Much respect for this lady. Much respect for Debbie. Much respect for all of the women who have been involved in this. Much respect for all the men who have been involved in it. But I rely on these folks to help do the right thing. One of the right things that we decided we wanted to do was we wanted to always make sure that we were taking care of our youth in some way, shape, and or form. And that's why you're here and I'm glad you're here. I hope, I hope that each and every one of you had at least one experience that you will look back on when you're ancient like me. <laughs> <laughs> last day, Lucy? What? Say your last day? <laughs> if it's not, we got some right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're ancient like me, I hope you have something that you can look back from this experience and say, this is what I learned and it had an impact on my life. When you are ancient like me, one thing that you will know Things that I did when I was in high school and shortly after that, in college, I now know how important they were. I didn't have any clue how important they were then. Because I was going through them and I was young and I knew everything and there was no adult who could tell me nothing. Because I had all the answers. I went to the job, I thought, three weeks after I get here, oh, I'll be running this place. <laughs> they didn't quite see it like that. Especially my father. My father was a chef and a janitor. And so when I worked for him, it was cleaning toilets at 3 o'clock in the morning or midnight or whenever it was. So I learned a little bit of humility. I learned what it's like to clean up after other people. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that to keep you grounded and to understand that somebody, if it ain't me, somebody else is doing it. And if you do it, then you understand the dignity of the hard work involved, and you never look down on the other people who are doing it. That's important. When I worked with him at the restaurant, I was a busboy cleaning up tables, singing for tips. Not really, but I was trying to get some tips. <laughs> and you understand what it's like to be face to face with people who ignore you while you're there. You're not even there when you're doing your job. They just ignore you. I always appreciated the ones that would turn to me, look me in the face and say, thank you very much. Or maybe slip me a buck. Those are the people I re remember because they were kind. They didn't look down on what I was doing. Okay? So I hope that you've learned how you fit into organizations. And I hope that the other thing that you've learned is, regardless of how small the job may appear, Regardless of how you may or may not have the title that you're looking for, everything that people do as part of the team is absolutely vital. You may be the third string, string, string tackle on the Chiefs, but when the first and the second team tackles go down and you go in, you're expected to perform up to their level. And if you don't, guess what? The team suffers, right? Everybody has a job. Everybody this job is important, and every individual has dignity while doing that job. The people who run the organizations that I've talked to you about or mentioned are people who come to us and work with us every single time that we ask. 
Without them, we could not do a lot of stuff. I very much appreciate good corporate citizens. I also appreciate the interns who work in my office, Lucy, who we've already discussed and will discuss further, <laughs> Gracie and Brandon for what they were doing and getting everything set up, and then Robert for all the work that he's doing in the Office of Innovation. You guys stand up. Where are my interns at? Thank you all very much. Now, some of you are going to be leaders in your organizations. Whatever the organization is, you go back to college, you're going to be the head of the Young Something Club, or you're going to be the editor of the newspaper. Little trick. It's not really a trick. It's really a matter of leadership, I think. Never, ever fail to recognize the people that you work with for the things they do. Never take credit for something that somebody else has done. Take the blame off of them when that blame is thrown. If you're running the show, you're ultimately responsible. If you want to work with people who are loyal to you, who understand and believe in you, then believe in them. When they do something, hold them up so other people can see that they've done something. Don't let them just work in the shadows back there. They deserve to be recognized. So where's my staff? Where's my staff over here? Stand up, staff. Step out so you can be recognized. Come on.
the benefit of others and for the benefit of the greater good, your life becomes so much richer, so much more fun, so much more warm. One side benefit of that is you stop complaining about all the crap that you don't have and recognize how valuable the things are that you do have. So thank you for being here. Thank you for what you perform and what you produce. But what I really want to thank you for is being good people. And I, my biggest hope for you is that as you go forward, you're going to make a mark by helping people who need your help and thereby elevate your own selves. So thank you. I appreciate everything that you've done except the ancient remark, <laughs> Lucy. But I do appreciate Lucy. She's been great. You guys have been good in the office and very much appreciate it. I've heard nothing but great reviews about what you've produced, and that's exactly what we were looking for. If you do have a chance to talk to other ancient people who have been to a place where you want to go, do it. Don't miss the opportunity. I know it's not cool. I know that a lot of you think that adults don't have anything to tell you, nothing to offer. Let me assure you, they do. There was no greater joy in my life than when my sons and daughters, at some point in their life, after battling through teenage years and early adulthood, came to me on an occasion of one issue or another and said, you were right. I said, what? They said, you were right. I said, you mean again? Yeah, you were right again. And you were wrong. Okay. So repeat after me. You're right. I'm wrong. Again. One more time. You're right. Come on now. You're right. I'm wrong. Again. All right. Keep that in the back of your mind. But you're going to need it sometime. And when you're an adult and ancient and have had kids that are now your age and you're sitting up here on this stage, you're going to have heard that too, and it will be one of the warmest days in your life. Thank you all very much. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you. All right, we're not done with GM Mayor's Light James, though. We're going to put you up here. Uh, has anybody ever seen the dating game before? It's a, it's an ancient show. Mayor's Light James, do you remember it? <laughs> the dating game? Yeah. I mean, I'm married. <laughs> Today. You don't have to marry the interns, but we're going to have you sit behind the blender over there. So for those who haven't seen this before, this was a great television show um, where one suitor got to have, or three suitors actually, um, got that potential to date um, the person behind the screen. What we're going to do today is, who's the perfect intern for the mayor today? And since we've picked on Lucy too much now, we're going to get three new uh, victims and volunteers. Um, Brandon, Pam, and Melissa. I got the right. You guys were pre-selected, so congrats. Come on up here. Everybody give them a round of applause. Okay. All right, well, let's first get to know you guys real quick. I assume you're Brandon. Yeah. Okay, good. Brandon, uh, just introduce yourself real quick. Where'd you work this summer? Uh, well, my name's Brandon. Uh, I worked at the Department of Economic Development with Aaron over there. So that was a really cool job. I so proud to get it. All right, what was the thing that surprised you most about the summer? Uh, about this summer, uh, the fact that I still managed to get through these doors despite being an hour late. I apologize for that, Mary. Glad to have you here. All right. Um, hi, my name is Melissa, and um, I worked at the Kansas City Health Department on the fourth floor with Kendra. And yeah, what was that other question? What was your favorite part of working at the health department? Oh, um, well, this is my third year doing it, so I guess the people I work with in my department, that's why I love so much. Hi, my name is um, Pauline Chen and Pao Bishai. Um, I go by Pam. Um, I work at the City Council with the Mia Potent Scott Wagner. All right, you come back? Yes, I hope you want to be back. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to make this really fun today. We have three different games we're going to play with you. Um, the first one, who had to make coffee uh, over the course of their internship this summer? Anybody? Okay, well, you're going to get a little practice today. Mayor Sly James likes his coffee. 
Um, but we're not going to tell you how exactly he likes it. So you're going to get just a few seconds here. There's all this implies to me back there, right? Yeah. Is there coffee back there? Yes, okay. <laughs> so you got coffee, there's some sugar. Oh, there's not any sugar, there's some sweet and low, sugar and raw trivia, coffee made, uh, even some dark chocolate flavored hot chocolate mix. So each of you get one cup. You don't have to fill it to the top, well, or you could, you know, it's up to you. Mayor Sly James is going to judge your coffee making skills, so guess, take a look at him real quick, guess how he would like his coffee, and go ahead and make some real quick, go, get up there. All right, so the three of them are going to have just a few seconds here to go ahead and pour coffee in the cup, maybe he doesn't even like coffee, I don't know. <laughs>
Answers, please. Boy, Bear Sly James is the one that stakes the cake on that across the board. Let's see what the answer was. Drunk uncle. Oh, dr drunk uncle, we don't have that right there. Drunk uncle, sorry, you all lose. <laughs> Maybe he had some coffee while he was doing that, though. All right, second question, or second tweet. You could stop whining and solve the problem since you seem to have so many answers. Yeah, that was a quick one. They all knew right away. That was a bigger slide Ding, 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 ding. All right, everybody's tied up. All right, third tweet. Back in my day, maybe ancient times, back in my day, we just went to the apple trees for our apple products. Two drunk uncles and one Sly James. Drunk uncle it is. All right, so Brandon and Melissa take the lead. All right, on to the fourth one. And I quote, you really are a sad little troll, aren't you? <laughs> what do you think, Pam? <laughs> oh, Pam goes with Bear Sly James. The answer is Bear Sly James. I'm sure the communications department loved that name. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we have one more? All right. <laughs> oh, boy. And I quote, this is a good tough one. Not as much as you suck as a thinker. All three, what do we got here? All three, my drunk uncle. That was the mayor. <laughs> if I did the math correctly real quick in my head, I think we're tied up there, right? Do we have one more, is that it? That's it, all right, so round two is a draw. So that means Brandon's won the first one, everybody won the second round, and we've got one more round, which could be um, the real deci the, the decision maker here. So um, everybody knows that the mayor's fashion is on point. What we're going to do is we're going to see who can tie the best bow tie. And we're going to need three volunteers on the audience. So can I get three people to come up? Three people, come on. There we go, one, come on up. Two. All right, two, it's okay, all you have to do is stand here. You want, come on up, that's all you stand here, come on. All right, three people. So what I need you guys to do is just stand right here in a row, right in front of our contestants. Okay, and you guys are gonna have, what, 30 seconds to tie a bow tie on these people, okay? Are you guys ready? Stand up. Go ahead and stand up. Oh, oh, wait, and I forgot, you gotta do it blindfolded too. So go ahead and look. And the mayor's gonna decide who ties the best bow tie on these people. Style points for creativity. If you can do it just perfectly, even better. All right, you guys might, uh, just so there's not a lot of inappropriate touching, I don't know, I'm just get closer. Here, come on up, I don't want you to, yeah, come up, up the stair. Hang on, there we go. I'll get you guys started. All right, hang on, don't start yet. Yeah, put, just put it, around, uh, put it around her neck. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, ready? You guys have 30 seconds. Go. Oh, Brandon's already clocked in. He thinks he's good to go. All right. Okay. Well, that's, that's an interesting style. Hey, wow. Melissa well, looks good there. Pam, getting finished. Yeah, 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. All right, would our models please go ahead and turn to the room? <laughs> and I'm going to need you guys to pretty, pretty quickly just parade right in front of the mayor's son James here and have him judge. <laughs> All right, so it sounds like Melissa takes that round. All right. Well, like in life, sometimes there isn't always a clear winner, but it looks like we did have a two-way tie at least between Brandon and Melissa, so give it up real quick for those of you. Um, and then we're gonna have the mayor step up real quick and grab a picture with you three. Um, and maybe as a tiebreaker, let's watch his Twitter account tonight and see if anything fun pops up and we can keep playing the guessing game. <laughs> All right, so we'll be doing this here. Cool. 
get over here. Isn't it interesting that we've got five women out of six volunteers, right? What happened to all the guys? <laughs> all right, thank you guys so much for being willing participants. And Lucy for being picked on so much. Alright guys, um, thanks again for joining us today. I hope you've had a fantastic summer. Um, you have a, a few minutes here, of course, to stand up and go go grab somebody who looks uh, looks like they know a little bit more than you, even if you don't think so. Um, but use this time to network, meet each other, um, go shake the mayor's hand, uh, enjoy your time. Thanks again for everything you do, and enjoy the rest of your summer.